The party has come to camp near a road on the way to their next destination. It's a cool night, but dry. The smell of early summer in the air. Foraging around the camp, one of the characters finds a sinkhole, home to an abundance of ripe berries. As the character is collecting their tasty treat, they notice the hole goes deeper than expected. In the shadows, between two thorny bushes, there appears to be an entrance to a cave. An unexpected opportunity for adventure. Hello and welcome. I'm Lewis Nichols, and we're going to keep things relatively short today. Lucky you, no long introductions. I thought we'd take a brief look at one way a GM might run a side encounter where the party finds a cave system. This approach takes a minimum of preparation and can be thrown in almost anywhere at any time. We'll also check in here and there on good practices, or at least my opinion of them, as they come up. So first, let's backtrack, because this little gully overgrown with blueberries can be whatever you need it to be. A sinkhole full of hawthorn, a fairy dimple full of mushrooms, whatever is required to fit your world or the season. It could just as well be an ice-filled crevasse. No matter, this is a great place to establish character habits and procedures. How do they respond when you mention something might be interesting? In a way, you're setting them up for dangerous encounters later, but right now, they don't need to know it's a possum hole or a lich's tomb. Don't assume the characters have gone into the pit. Certainly don't assume they've gone into the deeper hole. Ask them for an awareness check or a perception roll, and then give them the information. On a crit, maybe they even spot a glint of steel, a forgotten dagger, or shiny gold piece in the leaves. This just entices them to believe there might be something more down that hole. Not necessarily, but the artifacts are definitely a clue. Once the cave entrance is located, they will probably get the rest of the party, and it becomes a spelunking expedition. There is a difference between a caving expedition and a dungeon crawl. In the latter, you rarely actually crawl. This is an ideal opportunity for the smaller members, especially for those who can see in the dark. Dwarves, smaller Tagara, skinny elves, brownies, or whatever interesting yet diminutive Leto you might have in your party. Mid-range species will probably be alright, but will not have a fun time of it. A 5 foot 6 human in chainmail is about as far as you can push it, and that will come with some sizable penalties. So, what's in this cave? Your tracker finds evidence the warren is often used by small woodland animals. There are skunk tracks from as recently as three days ago. A high check will reveal a small humanoid track over a week old, probably a kobold. As the gnome, or whoever, leads the way, have them make an awareness check. If they succeed, they prevent a normal spider from infiltrating their armor. If they fail, go on to describe the scene that you were going to anyway. Players, you make your way down into the tunnel a little nervous that it's held together by roots and packed dirt. After 20 feet, declining at a slight grade, you find a dugout hollow where a bear might have once hibernated. There is some torn up armor and chewed bone. The passage continues. Investigation will reveal at least two kobold died here in the last few years. There are also bones from a number of small animals. Note, this is a spot where you can include money, treasure, or even a clue to some other adventure, if so inclined. If the party continues, they'll find a drop-off just 10 feet later. This is their first physical challenge, as the shaft descends 70 feet at a steep 80-degree angle. As this encounter may be run in various systems, I trust you to manage the details. With ropes and the right skills, it could be nothing. Once reaching the bottom, if they've managed to do it without total disaster, the characters can proceed either to the left or to the right. A 10 minute reconnoiter will reveal four total branches that can be explored. Mind you, at no point have you needed a map or a big encounter write up, nor will you. Even if well prepared, this whole thing can take just a few pages, stashed away to one day satisfy a side adventure or to fill in some grander part of your great design. At this point, you'll ask the characters bluntly, how long do you wish to explore? Well, how long to search thoroughly? You don't know. Could be 20 minutes. Could be a lifetime. How long would you like to commit to before reassessing? 
Assuming your party is remotely organized, they should be able to give you a simple response. For instance, we'll go for an hour. At which point, you refer to your handy dandy chart, pictured here. Note to the party that most of the time they are on their knees or their bellies, and either ascending or descending at 30 degree angles or steeper. It's slow going and hard to check every nook and cranny. Even alert characters are in constant danger of ambush. Given that, feel free to spook them by regularly making the role awareness checks to known as miter details. In all, the party would have to spend 11 hours in the cave system before feeling confident of full exploration. Along the way, I'd mix in four or five combats, simple but ones that will inflict steady wear and tear on the characters. You can plant any amount of treasure in the form of gemstones, ores, or simple gold pieces. Challenging the party's desire to haul low-grade ore out of the hole for profit is an option. Remember, if the characters are suffering, the players will feel a little pain as well. You might even allow the caves to be a new mineral resource for the area. In fact, you can allow this encounter zone to contribute to your campaign in any capacity you need it to, or just forget it ever happened. In preparation, print or copy stats for a number of monsters that will, or at least might, be encountered. That way you're not figuring out random encounters on the fly. At no point should you worry about actually creating a physical map. The details of the ups, downs, lefts, and rights just don't matter that much in this case. All you need is a brief intro to serve as a front cover for your encounter. The first page should include any additional notes you need to get things started smoothly. Then, your encounter sheets, and then a timeline. You can mix and match these for infinite side encounters throughout a campaign. The usefulness of little adventures like these depends upon the game you like to run. Believe me, I am aware that as they are presented, it might just be a waste of your time. Or maybe it can fill in whenever a few of your players are missing. That way you get in some playing time, but your MIAs are not missing out on critical events. But even if everybody's there, these kinds of side quests can provide an entertaining backdrop for your characters to make their own magic. For a beginning group, it's some low pressure bug hunting where they don't have to worry about what NPCs might be out to get them. For a higher level group, it might just be a nice distraction. It's the kind of dungeon that values skills that are often ignored. Climbing, caving, rope use, geology, mineral lore, etc. At the same time, it disadvantages characters who probably dominate the session more than not. Centaur, big humans, minotaur, anything over six feet tall will probably have to wait out at the entrance. Obviously this is a choice, and not always the right one for every group. You can just as easily make the caves a little bit bigger, just don't forget the penalties. Oh, and don't forget that spider. As the characters leave the cave and start to count out the loot, everyone can have a great laugh as their scout feels a little creepy crawly moving around their armpit, getting ready for a nap of its own.